Malaria is a life-threatening mosquito-borne disease caused by a plasmodian parasite. It is transmitted to humans through the bite of the Anopheles mosquito. Once an infected mosquito bites a human, the parasites multiply in the host liver before infecting and destroying red blood cells. Malaria is a medical condition that is a systemic infection that affects the whole body from head to toe. What happens when someone get, get, um, gets malaria? It's, they get what is called the plasmodium falciparum, which is the parasite that causes malaria. It's a protozoa type of a parasite that causes malaria. It's only transmitted by mosquitoes. And it's only one type of mosquito that spreads or causes the transmission of malaria. And it's called the female anopheles mosquito. Malaria is a parasitic infection which is very abundant in this country and all of Southern Africa. It's mainly very prevalent in the low field or low-lying areas, in especially from region 3 onwards. So it's on, it's on the high out, in the low altitude. Kulana Mashingo, Kariba, Mzarabani, Kokwe, areas, areas of the country. It is prevalent in the low-lying low areas, I think, because of the weather. And it, it, it's worse as you go to Mozambique. Uh, places, it's also a very hot areas. The breeding of the uh, mosquitoes is much quicker and much higher. So when you go to people, places like uh, TRC, there's a prevalent malaria there. Uh, all the equatorial areas, it's full of malaria and other various uh, uh, diseases. But uh, mainly it's caused by uh, what you call plasmodia. That is the cause of uh, malaria. Uh, it's a parasite uh, which is transmitted from a, an anopheles mosquito it's a female mosquito which uh, transmits malaria. Malaria is a condition that is not available or found in all the places in the world. There are certain areas in the world that, are, that we call endemic of malaria. For example, in Zimbabwe, places like Harare, Lawaya, CBD areas, they do not have malaria. If you get bitten by a mosquito in Harare, you won't suffer from malaria. But if you are in areas like the low belt, Ipo Valley, Triangle, Chiregi, and places like Gokwe, the Falls, Binda, most rural areas like uh, Mondari, Nkosu, Nzoko, Nzarabani, those areas are endemic with malaria. That means if you get bitten by a mosquito in those areas, chances are you will contract malaria. So these are the endemic areas, the areas of high prevalence of malaria. What happens if you are not staying in those areas and you visit those areas, the chances of suffering from malaria are increased. And what we say is before you travel, treat before you travel, you should take some prophylaxis to protect yourself from suffering from malaria. Then when you board the throughout your stay, you should always be taking prophylaxis to prevent yourself from suffering from malaria. And then when you come back from those areas, you should continue for another two weeks taking the prophylaxis to protect yourself from suffering from malaria. If you stay in those areas, you develop what is called innate immunity. You develop what is called acquired immunity. When you grow up in these malarious areas and you stay in there, you usually develop that uh, immunity. That means you won't suffer from malaria, no matter how much you get bitten by mosquitoes. Usually you see people who stay in Chile, for example, they don't suffer from malaria, most of them. But when you stay in those areas and you travel, you move from those areas and you come to an area of those other places that do not take malaria. When you go back to those areas, you lose that immunity. So we encourage that if you are traveling back to those areas, you need to stay in those areas and you move from there to Harare or you move back 
you also need to take some prophylaxis. Malaria happens when a bite from the female Anopheles mosquito infects the body with plasmodium. Only the Anopheles mosquito can transmit malaria. The successful development of the parasite within the mosquito depends on several factors, the most important being humidity and ambient temperatures. When an infected mosquito bites a human host, the parasite enters the bloodstream and lays dormant within the liver. Malaria can be a bad one. Malaria, no one can go fish or go pera simba. Can a kushaya apete iti pa kujga. Can a kupindwa ne chan. Saka kuti udziviri re malaria unofa na kunge muthi garaban jumbe ya kawo ma basina jumvuram. Especially je kungo rasa mvura pesi pesi kuita sue. Re kuti pane paka jenga mvura. Pano kunze reso tu mosquito iwant. Kui udziviri ra unofa na ugaroni mosquito ne iti. Can a kutenga koi. Can a kusora ma futa no kunze reso kuti mosquito isange iti kuruma. Especially over 100 types of plasmodium parasite can infect a variety of species. They replicate at different rates, and this affects how quickly the symptoms escalate and the severity of the disease. Five types of plasmodium parasite can infect humans. They are found in different parts of the world. Some cause a more severe type of malaria than others. Severe form malaria is a severe form of malaria where it is going to be infecting your, 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 the brain. It's when the malaria is caught into your brain. So it's a very severe form of malaria and it's treated really it's a serious medical emergency where someone is got to go to hospital and be treated by specialists in the hospital. And even if it happens, Mamisha, you should go at least to a, to a district hospital where they have adequate stocks of the proper drugs for you to have a treatment for cerebral malaria. So if you start having persistent headaches and things like that, and, and you start having a, a symptoms of confusion, rush to hospital and get treated, you know, because it may have a Maybe. And when it's not complicated, the chance of survival are also reduced because malaria has got severe, severe complications, things like hypoglycemia that can actually kill you, can have so low blood sugar that can even kill you. Or some of the complications can be permanent. I once had a patient that was put on um, that delayed treatment and they came on the already had cerebral malaria. By the time we treated the patient and we, we discharged them, they went home but their brain was already damaged and now they are psychiatric patients from the insult that they got from uh, the malaria. So the delayed treatment will make our jobs a bit more challenging and the outcome of the treatment is also affected. So encourage that when you suspect you've got malaria, seek treatment and get treated as soon as possible. Symptoms of uncomplicated malaria typically last 6 to 10 hours and recur every second day. Some strains of the parasite can have a longer cycle or cause mixed symptoms. As symptoms resemble those of flu, they may be undiagnosed or misdiagnosed in areas where malaria is less common. In uncomplicated malaria, symptoms progress as follows through cold, hot and sweating stages. The symptoms of malaria are generally vague and they are wide and violent. Usually, the common symptoms that you get include headaches or malaise. By malaise, you mean generalized body weakness, the skin, the body, the skin, you have no power, you are unadorned, you cannot be interested in what is happening. You might also suffer from joint aches, a few people also suffer from nausea and vomiting. These are the usual common symptoms of malaria. But now when the malaria gets complicated, we call it complicated malaria, the symptoms tend to change and they also vary depending on the complication that you get. In areas where malaria is common, many patients recognize the symptoms as malaria and treat themselves without visiting a doctor. In severe malaria, clinical or laboratory evidence shows signs of vital organ dysfunction. Symptoms of severe malaria include fever and chills, impaired consciousness, multiple convulsions, deep breathing and respiratory distress, abnormal bleeding, 
and signs of anemia, clinical jaundice, and evidence of vital organ dysfunction. The symptoms of malaria, uh, basically, uh, it is very vague symptoms of malaria. It can be just like any other flu. You can start with having a headaches, a fever, you can have a sore throat, you can have muscle aches, generalized body weakness, and then uh, you can have chills and rigors, which can come, uh, goes away for about uh, one of the, for about two days, comes back again, goes away for about two days, comes back again, and getting worse and worse. So these are the, 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 the classical symptoms of malaria, although it can also go on when it is being asymptomatic. Uh, Generally, after you have been bitten by an infected mosquito, you, you should uh, start having symptoms in about within 10 days. That's when you start having uh, symptoms. No combination of symptoms can reliably distinguish malaria from other causes, but a parasitological test is vital for identifying and managing the disease. In some malaria endemic areas, such as Sub Saharan Africa, the disease its severity can cause mild immunity in large proportion of the local population. As a result, some people carry the parasite in their bloodstream but do not fall ill. When it comes to the diagnosis of malaria, there are mainly two ways that we do the diagnosis. One, we do a rapid test. You just take a, you pick your finger, then you take the blood, you put it on the slide, and then you look at the blood. There and then you can tell the it's malaria or not. This one is an antibody antigen test. Some people may test negative and they actually have malaria. That's the difference with this one. Then the second one is a malaria or MP slide, malaria parasite slide. You look at the slide on a microscope, then you actually see the malaria parasite on the slide. This one is under the same diagnostic if you find the malaria parasite. The disadvantage of both these two tests are you might not find, uh, you test someone and the malaria is not there, the result is negative. Yet someone actually is suffering from malaria. So malaria is difficult to diagnose when it comes to that. So because of that, when you do a malaria test, a slide or a, a rapid test, if they are both negative, then the symptoms are pointing towards malaria. We actually put you on treatment based on the, the symptoms that you are suffering from. You don't necessarily need to get the result to be positive, unlike things like HIV. But if you get a positive test, it definitely means you've got malaria. So the symptoms are very important. If you remember the symptoms that we talked about earlier on, when you've got any of those symptoms, please visit the nearest food facility and get assistance. WHO now has said that what is very important is that we have RTT, a rapid uh, testing of malaria. It's, uh, it's available at every clinic as we speak. In the whole, in the whole country, you go to any rural the clinic, you go for a, a blood test. So it is either you are negative or positive for, this, for the rapid test. That is the, the national. If, if, you, if you have severe malaria, then uh, what, what happens is with malaria, uh, it destroys the red cells. So you, you start a, a, a destroying red cells, you have severe headaches, you have severe weakness, uh, severe fever as well. All the symptoms you are talking about they become very severe. Then become delirious, and you can develop into a coma, go into what you call just bleeding or you die. Expanding access to ACT treatment worldwide has helped reduce the impact of malaria, but the disease is becoming increasingly resistant to the effects of ACT. In places where malaria is resistant to ACT, treatment must contain an effective drug partner. But what is happening is because of uh, pre, uh, persistent use of uh, anti-malarial drugs, what happens is uh, they are, uh, they, like chloroquine has already been phased out completely. We are no longer using chloroquine because it was being used by almost everyone. Without uh, rapid testing, and the, the, the parasite became resistant to chloroquine. So when it became resistant to chloroquine, you can't use you, you you then have malaria. You take chloroquine, it doesn't do anything to it. Because as much as we as human beings are fighting for our survival, the malaria parasite is also fighting for its survival. So in in the process of fighting for its survival, it develops immunity to the drugs which are being used for malaria. 
So in, in, there are now areas, you know, there's a recommendation that we are using in atomicin uh, plus another drug uh, which, which we are using, we call atomicin in, in this country. But there are areas which are starting to have resistance to quantum as, as we speak. So we have to develop better drugs, we have to develop better drugs to combat that resistant strain. Because you know it's also fighting uh, for survival. So nowadays we stop using chloroquine and pancidine because we've noticed that the resistance levels of uh, malaria to those drugs are now very high. So nowadays we mainly use what is called coatimeter, that is the gold standard of treatment. Usually the cost for the treatment of malaria is just three days and we are done. Those without symptoms may be treated for infection to reduce the risk of disease transmission in the surrounding population. Artemisinin based combination therapy ACT is recommended by the WHO to treat uncomplicated malaria. Artemisia annua is better known as sweet wormwood. It is known for its ability to rapidly reduce the concentration of plasmodium parasites in the bloodstream. When it comes to treatments with malaria, we only treat people that are suffering from malaria, whether we diagnosed from the symptoms or from the a rapid test or from the slides. We treat everyone that is diagnosed with malaria, whether it's clinical or by laboratory diagnosis. The gold standard of treatment, one is called the coatimeter, usually it's a certain coatimeter. That's the initial drug that we use for treatment. Previously, we used to use a combination of chlorophyll and pancidine. But as time passed by, and it's general with the bacteria, parasites, or even by viruses and funguses, they mutate and become resistant to certain drugs. Research to develop safe and effective global vaccines for malaria is ongoing, with one vaccine already licensed for use in Europe. Malaria vaccination is still something which is experimental, and we don't want to talk about it because it is not available in the country. Is not available, I think, to my knowledge, worldwide. There is only one vaccine which they say is available in the UK, in, in, the, in Europe, but not, not available yet in America. So Americans don't doubt it. Europeans they believe in it. There are several ways to keep malaria at bay. The prevention of malaria is what we encourage and advocate for. So, for the more people to get, Eating the mosquitoes, young people to get infected by malaria, young people to suffer from malaria. It's best to prevent, like the older age, prevention is better than cure. Number one, make sure that if you're in a malaria area, you wear long sleeves, shirts, you wear long trousers or socks to help reduce the surface area that is exposed to the mosquitoes. That's the first thing. Two, you make sure that you destroy all open cans. When you open a can of beef, whatever you're eating from the can, Destroy the pain and make sure it will not be collecting for water. Then three, make sure you reduce if there are any open areas that can accumulate water, let them be closed. All open holes make sure they are covered or closed so that mosquitoes do not have any breeding areas. You also need to cut or slash any grasses around your homesteads so that there is little breeding space for many mosquitoes. When you do that, on top of that, when you go to sleep, Make sure that you've got your mosquito nets to protect yourself and to cover you when you're sleeping. Also make sure you've got mosquito coils. You can also have mosquito repellents in the form of petroleum jellies or sprays that you can use to minimize the chances of being infected or bitten by mosquitoes. Everywhere, <laughs> We must not have stagnated water. 
want to, uh, to prevent stagnated water number one. So that we to Tangare by uh, to kill off the development of these mosquitoes. That is it, number one. So in also some uh, uh, there are programs where they are putting chemicals to kill off the malaria, the, the mosquitoes huh? uh, in those stagnated uh, ponds and things like that. So it was number two. Number three, uh, we want if the mosquito uh, is grown. We want you to prevent it from biting you. So it's personal protection through use of one, mosquito repellent, two, insecticide treated mosquito nets, and three, you must wear my clothing are long enough to prevent your, to, to, to cover your, your hands and your feet, upper and lower limbs, and you, if, if possible, you, you, could, you could cover your, your head and things like that. So, personal protection. Number three, if you can't do all those things, or if you happen to be bitten again by mosquitoes, you must use drugs for prevention, uh, for uh, as prophylactic drugs. But these ones, you must take a week before you go to that place, in that endemic area, and you continue taking for at least three weeks after you come off from the endemic area. And when you, you, you come back again, the way of preventing bad malaria is that you have what we call a high index of suspicion, where you, with every small symptom which you have, of which you think of malaria, which we have been talking about, you must uh, go and seek medical help as soon as possible.